Please rise. Gospel according to Luke. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread throughout all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has appointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> okay, Nebraskans or Huskers, however you want to be called. I have a quiz for you. Very good. I'm not being sarcastic either. I don't have dandelions. <laughs> right? It's a weeder. A weeder. A weeder? Yes, it's a weeder. Weeds. Who gets rid of weeds? Okay. Tayden, do you know what this thing is? You ever seen this before? Who said back scratcher? <laughs> exactly. It's a three pronged back scratcher. <laughs> is that you? Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, one more. So I have radishes, green onions, zucchini, cucumbers, mm, and green beans. Green beans, yes. Where's Mary Trenhill? Green beans, right? I remember last year, last summer, I said, I may have a few green beans. Mary's like, oh, let me know. I will. So, <laughs> I got this stuff here. And if you see someone like me, for example, you know that I'm up to something with this stuff. I have something going on. Something's coming up. I have something planned. So what am I planning to do with this stuff? Plant. Plant a garden. You're right. Yes, but you ask. But why are you going to plant a garden outside at the end of January? Is it possible for me to have a successful garden if I plant today? Outside? No. Right? You're going to tell me I'm making a big mistake. It's not possible. I've been living in New York City for too long. Don't you know any better? I have a planter here. I love this planter. This is going to look great on my deck. I had a nice plant in it, but I killed it. So I'm going to see if I can keep... Why are you laughing? 
I'm a lover, not a killer. Um, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to fill this with soil, plant some seeds in it, and keep it in my house with that work. Yes, definitely. It would grow inside. And then I could transplant what, grow in, what, what grows in here, and then in the spring, I can have it outside. And then it can grow even more. Now, as a gardener, I need all of these tools. And in fact, I got more stuff up there. I need all of these tools. But I just can't throw all these seeds anywhere at any time. They need to grow in the right conditions. I'm up to something. But to me, but to be honest, I am actually not the one that is up to something. I am actually the packets of seeds. I'm the soil. I have potting soil there. I was going to carry that out, but I realize I'm wearing white. But I am this packet of seeds. I am soil. I am water. I am the three-pronged back scratcher. And you, too, are the packets of seeds and water and soil and hand tools for a garden. So let me clarify this, though. I can't be all of those things for a successful garden. I can't be seed, soil, water, and a hand tool. I am one of those things which is going to contribute to a successful garden. And you can't be all these things either. Each one of you is a separate tool. Now, you might be something different, though, in, in the garden. You might be a watering can. You might be a garden hose. You might be a sprinkler, a tiller, plant food, a fence or netting to keep the rabbits out. You might be a bee or a butterfly for pollination? How about a worm to aerate the soil? You could be something abstract like warm temperatures or sunlight. All these various and diverse things are needed to have a successful garden. One is not more important than the other. Without one, the others cannot be successful. And because of your contribution and skill, the garden will be fruitful and abundant. God has something in store for you in the garden. Through Jesus Christ, God is up to something in you. It began in the waters of baptism when God claimed you as a son or as a daughter. We continue this claim of adoption when we live wet. If you were closer. We live wet just like we emerged out of these baptismal waters, fresh, clean, and new, ready to go out into this garden that God has set up for us. God is also up to, us, uh, God is also up to something in us in the meal. When we eat and drink the bread and wine, the body and blood of Christ, in the meal we come sinful and unworthy and we leave the table to tend the garden forgiven and loved. We go out into the garden, our world, wet from our baptism, fed and forgiven at the table. I like the image of us as a diverse garden tool or set of garden tools which contribute to a fruitful and abundant garden. Paul, in his letter to the church in Corinth, uses the example of a body and body parts. In Paul's day, society could be understood as a body. In order for society to run well, its members needed to understand their place and their function. If one member or group of society didn't work properly or knew its proper place, all of society would suffer. The head and the belly were believed to be the most important parts of the body. And if your feet took over your body, if they took over the head and the belly, you would be out of sorts and not function properly. And the same was believed for society. But Paul's idea of society as body was radically different from the Greeks. 
No body part was more important than the other. All made important contributions to the body or community of Christ. In verse 17 of our reading, Paul writes, If the whole body were an eye, where would hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? God puts the human body together in a brilliant way. God carefully chose each part of your body for a specific function. Even the weakest part of your body serves the body. Likewise, God gives us each a talent for us to serve in the body of Christ. And who is to say that your talent is not a talent? Or that your contribution is less than? Or that you're nothing like super church lady who runs everything. God creates in you the way you contribute. Now what if God is challenging you to expand your talents, gifts, and contributions to the body of Christ and to the world? So let's go back to the, my image of the garden. Let's say you're a sprinkler. This is you. This is you, Kathy. You're a sprinkler. And you have been a great sprinkler. This is what happens when you sit up front. Don't worry, I can move. (laughs) But you know, the garden has changed. It's bigger. There's new plants. Plants which require you to maybe sprinkle in a new way. Can you be a new sprinkler? Or, what if you've never been a garden tool before, but this nagging voice inside says to you, be a shovel. Be a shovel. And all you can think about is being a shovel. I had a nagging voice once. It lasted, oh, maybe 40 years. I remember it began when I started playing for church when I was 14. You love playing, don't you? You love leading worship, don't you? And for decades, the nagging voice expanded my playing for church to church council, then adding on lay preacher, and then volunteering at a food pantry, and finally calling me to ministry. And that nagging voice continues today, right now, getting me to expand my contribution to the garden. For me to sprinkle in new and wondrous ways. We may be in the middle of a cold, 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 wintry winter. Lifeless trees, solid frozen ground, no flower gardens to brighten up the day after day of cloudiness, no open windows to freshen stuffy rooms. But these garden tools that are here are indications that something is up. That this cold, dead winter is not going to last because Something is up. Life will return. And we are planning for spring to come and bring new life. Life will return to St. Mark's. Not that we don't have life here, because we do, and I thank God for it every day, but life will return to St. Mark's and always be a part of St. Mark's. And that's because all of you are indications that something is up. And God is up to something here at St. Mark's. God is up to something at St. Mark's because you're still wet from your baptism. God is up to something at St. Mark's because 
God will feed and forgive you at the table. God is up to something at St. Mark's because there is a room waiting for you filled with garden tools. And Christ is opening that door for us and calling for us to tend this garden together. Amen.